Okay. Hopefully my phone doesn't fall out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right on. Okay. So first off, to work with pastels, we need um, uh, this is white cartridge paper. It's good for pencil, pen, uh, pastel, charcoal. Uh, it's a nice sort of smoother paper with just a little bit of texture. Really helps the pastel to stick to this. So if you're ever looking for paper, just look for the description on the, the cover of it. You can always know, it'll indicate if it's good for the medium that you're using. Uh, so we have our paper. Um, I have our chalk pastels. Just love the way that looks. That sort of rainbow of colors. Um, and then we also need a pencil. So I have a darker pencil. This is 7B. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of work with uh, silhouettes. So I'm actually going to be using the dark, uh, the pencil uh, to sort of get that effect. But I have 7B. So if your pencils, you know, traditional pencils, HB, that's sort of the middle range. Um, and then it goes like HB, 2H, 3H, 4H, and that's the lighter range of lead. Uh, but if you go back, you have 2B, 4B, 6B, um, 7B, which I have today. That's a, a darker, heavier um, side of the lead. So we're gonna get a nice sort of heavy uh, pencil uh, on the paper to create a silhouette effect. So, and then I have an eraser just in case. And uh, with pastels, I've done this in the past. I've used my hands a lot. I'll still be using my hands, so be prepared. Your hands are gonna get messy working with pastels. But I thought I have some tissue paper and I've heard that using tissue paper um, is a good way to mix the color together. So we're gonna be blending and creating a sky right now. So that is it. That's my supplies. Um, so today I want to do a um, sort of an evening landscape um, with a moon. So to achieve that, I'm actually, I want something circular. So I'm just using what's around me. So I'm going to use this cup. I'm going to use this and I'm going to take first step. I'm taking this, putting it about, mm, you can see I'm about a quarter of the way down on the paper. This is going to be the moon. But I'm going to take, um, I'm actually going to use, I have a lighter lead pencil here. I'm actually going to use a lighter lead pencil for this. So, so we're going to do this. Okay, perfect. So you can see, I don't know if that shows up. I'm also wearing an apron. I feel like I always talk about wearing an apron. Can't stress enough, wear an apron. <laughs> Just helps. Keeps the mess off of you. So you can see I've got my circle there. So this is gonna be my moon. So this is a very, very easy and simple um, picture that we're doing today. So. We're gonna create a night sky here. So what I wanna do is start with a darker color. Um, so I have, we're gonna be using darker, I'm gonna use a, like a darker brown and a black to blend together. And then that's gonna fall down into the night sky. So I'm gonna be using this sort of darker tealy blue. Marissa says, love chalk pastels, yes. Chalk pastel is such a cool, you can get, what I love about chalk pastels, um, so I'm just gonna start uh, putting my first layer of night sky at the very top. I'm also gonna be sort of yammering on while I do this. But the one thing I really love about uh, chalk pastels is how hands-on it is. So you're gonna see as we do this, So we're doing that, how it blends. So I, um, you can use, either use your hands to blend like this, so you can see, you can already see that sort of 
the way the color and the chalk blend together, it's such a cool effect. But I am gonna try using uh, tissue paper. So I've never done this before. I'm gonna see if this works. So I just have sort of crumpled a bit of tissue paper here. Mm -hmm. Nice. So basically I'm getting the same effect, but um, my hands are not messy. So I wanna say that that's, that's fine, this is great. I think tissue paper is a great option if you don't want to get too messy. But I do kind of enjoy the, the sort of messy factor <laughs> to, to pastels. I think that that's such a fun, like I said, it's very hands-on. I really appreciate that it's so hands-on. So I'm bringing this color, making it a little bit lighter bringing that color into the top so it's the darker than a bit of a lighter color to get that dark sky effect. And as I'm going, I'm just gonna keep blending these colors together. And the beautiful thing about chalk pastels is I think one of the biggest assets to working with this medium is the blendability. You get such, it's such a cool effect uh, when you blend the chalk pastels. It's so blue, uh, so fluid. It's got such a fluid vibe to it, you know? So I'm gonna try to keep, I'm gonna use, uh, I wanna try to keep it as clean around my moon as much as possible. So I'm gonna be a little bit more delicate here. It's funny, I only, I think I mentioned this before, I've done chalk pastels a couple of times and I just wanna reiterate that I am in no way any kind of professional when it comes to working with chalk pastels. But because of these virtual, um, these virtual, workshops that we're doing, I sort of put myself in a position where I was like, you know what, I'm going to try out chalk pastels. I had a, I had a set, so I thought, why not, right? And I've had such a blast working with chalk pastels. I just love the effect, and I really like feeling like you're sort of in control of these colors. And I think one of the biggest parts of art is allow, allowing yourself to have fun. There's a playfulness when it comes to art and I think just the physicality of chalk pastels really kind of brings you back into that moment of having fun with the medium. You know what, like honestly, it definitely reminds me of like finger painting a little bit when we were kids, right? I remember in kindergarten working on with finger painting where you put the paint down, but you actually use your hand to move the colors around on your canvas. I think it's really important to have fun um, when you're working on art. Sometimes we forget about having that sense of play when you're working with your arts and it's easy to sort of, you know, get frustrated or, you know, set yourself up with expectations that you can't meet. But to sort of play around with a medium like this, for example, can really bring you back and can center you and help you to remind you of how, how fun art can be. And honestly, that joy can really sort of be a reset for you in terms of inspiring you, uh, giving you creative ideas. Yeah, having fun with art. Sometimes I think it's a little underrated. Or people like having fun with art, I think sometimes people think that, oh, you need to be so serious with art. And like, well, yes, there is a serious element. Definitely self-expression is a big part of who we are, but 
I think having fun is just so vital. So vital, vital to this process. Okay, so as you can see as I'm talking, I'm sort of brought, we've started with this moodier, darker color, tried to bring it down a little bit lighter. So I'm trying to create a bit of an evening sky here. Um, I'm gonna keep bringing the blue down a bit and then I want to, bring in just a little bit of a lighter color at the bottom. So we'll see what I mean. So for the sky, whatever color you happen to be using, I'll tell you what I've done today is I've used actually like uh, the darkest color is um, a burnt umber. So it's not actually a total black up here. So we have a bit of a burnt umber and this is just a lighter, uh, just a lighter brown. And then this is uh, the blue color I'm using. But it definitely, I'm trying to create, it's giving a bit of an earthy, more earthy tones. And uh, feel free to use whatever colors that you want to use on your paper or your canvas. So if you want a pink sky, that's cool. If you want a purple sky, hey, that's cool too. Purple, big fan. Okay. Oh, I love how this is looking. That's so beautiful. I just think, let's take a pause for a moment to reflect. You can see how it's just using my fingers. I had originally mentioned using tissue paper. Um, again, if you don't want your fingers to get messy, I would highly recommend using tissue paper. But upon using it, I realized I enjoy, I really enjoy that. My fingers are just covered in chalk pastel right now. And there's such a, I don't know, it's cool, I like it. Okay, um, so now I wanna use a little bit of an orange color at the bottom. Um, I'm probably gonna use orange and then maybe a bit of yellow, I'm not sure, but I'm just sort of getting like, sort of trying to create that sense of the last bit of light popping through at the bottom. So I think I will, I'll use like a little bit of orange here and blend that up. Use a little bit of blue. Okay. Okay, we're just sort of blending that up so you can see that sort of just really nicely blends together. And then I'm gonna actually go at the bottom part and use sort of the, the yellow. Nice. So we've got one, two, three, four. And with the yellow, we're, we've used five colors to create this sort of gradual, this is our gradient of color coming down the paper. Uh, Yes, and it looks like Marissa said, a big part of chalk pastels is the messy hands and how it's creative and relaxing. Yes, that's 100%. Okay, gonna use this yellow now. Mm, yeah, I like this. So you just sort of pull that color just across the baseline of that orange. So the yellow just is sort of touching the orange. And then again, just using my fingers to just blend that over. Creates a very seamless sort of, it creates a seamless blend between all the five colors. So I do feel you can look at it like sort of set back look at your picture and think, okay, maybe I can add a bit more darker, maybe I can add a bit more orange. So what I'm seeing right now is I wanna add a bit more orange and a bit more blue, and then just make the top a bit darker. So I think it's always good when you are working, no matter where you are with your practice or what type of picture you're at, um, take a moment 
put down the brush, put down the pastel, uh, put down your marker, sit back from the picture, just have a look. Or you know what, better yet, go take a break. Go get a glass of water, um, look out the window for a moment, then come back so you sort of have cleared your head a bit and then you can kind of almost come back with a fresh set of eyes and you can think, okay, all right, maybe I should add a bit more color here. So I think it's always important to reflect on the piece that you're working on um, as you go through the steps. So as I look at my piece, I want to add a bit more orange here. So again, I'm just using quick little strokes here. When you work with the chalk pastels, you'll see, you'll notice almost like a color of dust. And then you just wanna move the pastel and that's, when you're using your finger, you're actually taking that pigment, that sort of dusty pigment and blending it into the paper. So again, that sort of goes back to how I said, I really like the element of control, like you can really sort of control how you blend with chalk pastels. Okay, so I want to bring that into the yellow. So we still have, and then I really want to bring in just a bit more blue. I do like how there is a bit of white popping through. I want it to be just a little bit darker. Um, if your hands are like quite messy with the pastel, I always recommend I keep water close by just in case. My brush is stuck in there. But I have a little bit of water, dip my fingers, give them a wipe. So today I have my apron. Um, I'm fine with my fingers right now, but if they were very messy, I would just give them a dip. Quick little wipe, nothing. I don't have to go soap and water my fingers. I can just little dip, little wipe, you're good to go. Uh, so here we go. So now I'm just moving that blue in one of the sort of sort of nice effects you get when sort of because I don't wash my fingers as often as I should when I do chalk pastels that colors end up sort of stepping into each other so like that little bit of yellow on my finger is going to sort of move into here so it's really going to tie for myself I think it's going to tie this picture together nicely so I want to add a bit more dark up here So now we're just sort of darkening up. There we go. Oh, nice. So I've sort of tried to wrap the dark just around the edges. I've said this in before when I've worked on pieces. Um, bringing the colors down like this, or the orange is sort of curling up just a bit, it's sort of, you can create your own frame on the picture. It really sort of gives um, a finished quality to the edges when you sort of pull that color down, so. Yeah, I really like how this is looking, nice. Um, wow, okay, so this is, Looking, turning out better than I expected. <laughs> Again, chalk pastels, you also get a very sort of cool vibrancy to the colors. Um, okay, so for the next step, this is, uh, I'm just gonna get a little sip of water. It's always good to keep your favorite beverage close to you. So for me today, it's a water. Sometimes it's coffee, but you know what, today I had too much coffee, so. I feel like I'm talking really fast, but hi, I had four cups of coffee already, so that's probably why. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna be using this darker pencil. So again, this is a 7B pencil. I'm not sure if that shows up. It's backwards, but you can see 7B. And this is just a Stadler uh, pencil. 
so I'm going to be using this to sort of create so I just want to put a couple of trees here so I'm just going to create a bit of a line for the landscape So you're going to use the pencil and I'm just going to fill in this space. So it's a bit of a mixed media approach, I guess. So I'm using chalk pastels and then this is a pencil, just simply a pencil here. But I find working with the lead sometimes can really help to create um, some nice, strong, uh, silhouettes and when you're working with landscape silhouettes um, can be really pretty I like I advocate for silhouettes they're very can add a very nice sort of charming element to your picture especially a nighttime picture as we are doing and I might add a bit of brown to this too I might add that darker brown to this So now I'm just blending again the lead because it is a softer lead it's like a darker lead it's it's softer and you do get that really dense you can get that dense uh, blendable pencil lead color it's very very sim feels very similar to a chalk pastel So I'm just going to put another layer uh, on here. One thing that one technique that really helps um, is if you're not familiar. So you can see what I'm doing right now, just going back and forth like this, sort of angled all the way across. That's called hatching. Hatching. But one thing that really helps, and it's like sort of shading 101, but cross hatching, right? So that's where you just do this and then just do the same thing, but go crosswise like this. So exact same idea, but just doing it the opposite way across. And that just really helps to create a lot of coverage, especially because this is um, a silhouette, something darker. I always knew what cross hatching was, but I didn't realize that hatching was its own thing. So <laughs> and cross hatching is the combination of those two. Okay, here we go. Cross hatching also reminds me of, um, this is just a side note, but Archie, Archie comments. Uh, if you looked at the side of Archie's hair, he always like had a bit of cross hatching. I used to read Archie comics growing up. I loved Archie. Okay. Hey, so this is good. I like this. Uh, the yellow is still kind of popping through, but you know what? I like this. It's sort of tying in the entire, there's, it's creating such a, a continuity to the piece. So before I work on my trees, I want to try just adding a bit of the darker brown. So the darkest color at the top. I'm just going to put a line of it at the very bottom. I'm going to blend that into the pencil. Okay, right on. Okay, so I really like how working with this color I used up here, the very, very dark brown. I'm just sort of doing it around the edges of where the pencil was. And I think it's a really nice, it's helping sort of create this sort of nice blended effect. Wow, it's really nice. Okay, cool. Um, 
So what I want to do is, so I've done that. Uh, my next step is to work on a couple of trees. So I think I just want to do one, maybe a taller tree here. Okay. And maybe a smaller one right beside it. I don't know how well my tree, <laughs> how my tree, how good my tree game is, but we will find out. So just sort of indicated where I want my trees to be. Um, and then I'm going to work from the top to create sort of a traditional pine tree. So that would be sort of just sort of back and forth. You know how it kind of comes out like. Sort of comes out at an angle side to side nice so again you working with the pencil i like that you can get a really heavy um coverage with the pencil and working with the chalk pastel it's like they're still they look really nice together using pencil on top of chalk pastel it looks really nice it works whereas if you use like pencil or if you use like marker or a pen that could look um it could look cool i think it's really fun to mix mediums but in this case today i think working with pencils on this picture is uh better so again i'm just sort of making that sort of traditional like pine looking tree again it doesn't have to be perfect we're out in the woods with this tree so I'm gonna make it a little bit a little haphazard perhaps okay nice cool okay I got it uh, yeah trees really aren't my forte <laughs> at all but I'm like you know this is looking this is cool this is good uh, I would also recommend like you know, I know all of us are all of us are in lockdown, right? All of us are, you know, doing our thing. Um, I think that looking to the internet for ideas um, on how to do certain things, I highly recommend that because that's where you get this idea for using pencil um, on top of the chalk pastel. Uh, and I also like because it is a pencil. Um, I'm having I have a lot more control. And it's still blending really, really, really nicely. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider at the bottom. And then we're just going to bring that all the way down. I'm going to, I want the branches to kind of bleed into the landscape a bit. So it's not a perfect tree, but you know what? It's a tree. It's a tree nonetheless. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to do this one. I'm going to play around with this one. Give it like a little bit of branches at the top, but then maybe, maybe this one's a little bit, a little bit weaker. This one's a full tree and the one beside it has maybe lost some of its branches. There's a story behind this tree. What's, what happened? What happened? I'm gonna make it sort of bigger up the, like to the middle. So again, I'm just sort of going back and forth to create that sort of tree idea. You know what I mean? That traditional pine tree. I think it's called a pine tree. Almost creates like a skirt. So this one again, I purposely made to be just a little bit sparser, just to create a little bit of variation with this landscape. Okay, and now this one. Um, side note, I highly recommend I have <laughs> a pencil sharpener, but I seem to have misplaced my pencil sharpener. 
but I thankfully have two 7Bs, so I'm gonna switch, switch it out. So again, we're using 7B here, and I'm gonna do, again, a tree. Sort of three trees quietly sitting on the edge of a landscape, a mountain perhaps, maybe it's a big hill. But I think it's always beautiful to, I think silhouettes are beautiful, you know, silhouettes are such a fun, are so, are so dynamic. You can really create a dynamic effect with silhouettes. So again, just feel free to move and create your branches however you want. So this was a fuller tree. I tried to make this one just a little bit sparser, you know, give it like a bit of a backstory. And then this one, it's a bit fuller, but I'm gonna make it a little bit sparse in the middle. There you go. And then I'm gonna make it bigger here at the bottom or underneath it, just like that. I just started doing angled down brush strokes or pencil strokes with my pencil and to create that effect. There we go, nice. So this one is a bit fuller at the bottom, but it's a little bit sparse in the middle. So try to create a bit of variety. That's sort of fun, variety. Variety. And I'm blending this just like I did with the chalk pastels. Oof, my finger. Oof. Just dark with lead and pastels. Might need to dip my finger in the water after this. It's pretty, my fingers are pretty. Uh... Nice. Cool. So now I just want to take this pencil and I just want to add a bit more lead or a bit more pencil, 7B, this darker pencil to the landscape. And I just want to blend it a bit more, blend it into the trees. Nice. And then, so taking my very penciled fingertip and blending, blending that in here. Nice. So that is looking really good. Um, so now I really feel, because the next color I'm working with is white. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna take my little, uh, my fingers, I'm just giving them a little dip, you can see. Just a little bit of rinse off in here. Uh, we are gonna create a little bit of texture with the moon. Um, so um, there will be hints of darker, like a bit of shadowing to the moon as well. So it's okay if your fingers aren't perfectly clean. I'm gonna take Oh my apron. This is the beautiful, beautiful part of having an apron is just letting yourself wipe your fingers on it and letting paint fall on it. Whatever happens to be. Uh, okay. My hands air dry for a second. Have another sip of water. nice to see everyone today. Uh, really thank you, thankful for everyone who's uh, tuning in right now. Um, I know this is very, very, very unusual circumstances we are all in and you know what we thought was a normal day is very, very different now. So I'm just thankful that, uh, that you can be here and I hope that this can uh, bring you a bit of comfort, bring you a bit of relaxation 
uh, maybe a bit of distraction to your day. But for this part, okay, so back on track, we are doing the moon. So I'm adding white, you can't really see too much. It's sort of brightening it up a bit. But what I'm gonna be doing is adding just a bit of blue and brown to the moon to give the moon a bit of texture. So, and by adding white, by adding white to this moon, even though it may seem like, well, why it's already white, it's actually gonna allow the blue and the brown to really blend together. So you're gonna have these three colors, um, that sort of dusty, pastel color is going to be able to blend with that blue and that brown so okay there we go okay so now I want to take blend that nice so that is looking beautiful it's actually really made that moon pop Putting the white on that, putting white on white has just made that surface really, to me, it's really popping right now. You can see like that nice white pastel on there. So now what I wanna do is, I don't wanna put too much on. So I think what I'm gonna try doing is I'm just gonna add a little, I'm gonna put a little blue onto my fingertip. Let's see if this works. So I'm just trying to put like a bit of blue onto my fingertip, the one that I have been using for that moon. So you can see there. So I'm just adding a bit of tone. I'm gonna to see if this works to bring in that blue a bit. Cause I don't want it to be too, too heavy. Yeah, that's helping a bit. I might add a bit of blue. Oh yeah, that works. I just want to add a bit of texture to the moon. I don't want to add too much. So I'm actually going to put dab. I'm going to dab the blue one to create almost like, you know how the moon has the crater kind of vibe. So by dabbing the blue one, I'm actually creating a bit of a subtle, it's very subtle and I like it. It's helping to create that sort of moony that moon vibe. Nice. So this is really working. I'm literally just putting a little bit of the pastel onto the tip of my finger. And then to create that moon effect, like that sort of crater vibes, or, you know, when you look up at the moon, you can see hints of discoloration. It's not just a giant solid white ball in the sky there's texture to it so this is enabling some of that texture to show in the moon and i don't want to put it directly on to the onto the actual canvas because it might be too dark so this way i actually have a bit more control so again i've used that word a couple of times one thing i do like about pastel is i i find personally a strong sense of control with this medium i know kind of what's happening and I know what I can do with it. So that is looking good. I'm gonna add a bit more here at the bottom. Nice. Okay, cool, this is good. I like that. Um, so just be careful when you do work with pastels, it does get a little dusty, right? So I'm just going to blow some of that off. Okay, I'm just sort of, again, stepping back, having a look. Uh, it's good to sort of reassess what you're doing um, to think what can I add to engage the canvas or engage the paper more and to, to bring the best out of this work. Um, I think I want to try adding just a little bit of a blue line around the edge of the moon. I 
I do like that. I like that. So I'm just giving like a little bit of a border here. Not too much, being very delicate. I like that. It's really nice. So what I liked about this dabbing part was it was allowed me to be a little bit lighter with the color on the moon. So I'm going to add a bit more dabbing, just a bit more of that blue on the moon. Nice. And again, I'm really sort of capturing by dabbing. It's creating that sort of crater effect that the moon has when you look up at it. So, The moon is not a perfect white ball in the sky. It is of textured and very varied object in space. Nice, okay. <clears throat> And there you have it, Kate. Let me just, uh, before I do the full reveal. <clears throat> um, okay. So that is, uh, that's my, that's my uh, fun with chalk pastels. That's sort of, um, sort of a playful approach to the medium of chalk pastels. And I sort of touched on a couple of things I haven't done before. Um, so I'll just, move this back so you have a better view of it and I'll sort of review what we have gone through uh, with this piece. So again, very simple, very easy setup and fun. Your fingers are messy. Uh, there is an immediacy to this type of medium when you've got elbow grease going in and, you know, harkens back to the age of finger painting. I miss that. Um, it's nice to, to have fun. I think that that's a, a beautiful, a beautiful thing with art that we should always remember to do is have fun, have fun. Self-expression can only lead to inspiration. It can only lead to that satisfaction you get when you look down at the paper and you see, oh, I did that. Um, and I had a good time doing it. So let me just flip the camera. <clears throat> uh, close up, no. Okay. So today's setup, we had chalk pastels. Then we used a 7B, you can see it now, 7B pencil. So a darker lead. And I used the rim of this cup to create a moon. And I had a little bit of water here. You can see, just to sort of rinse off my dirty fingers because they got pretty dense. But this is what we came up with. So look at that. I am really, really happy with the end results today. Um, so I used five colors here. So we started with a very, very dark burnt umber, then was a lighter brown, then this blue, and I moved in with orange and the yellow. Then to create the silhouette, I used the 7B pencil here, and I just covered it and blended it very similar to the chalk pastels, and then I created these trees. Um, to give a bit of texture and more uh, opaqueness to this silhouette, I did add the very, very burnt umber to the just the peripheral. So you can kind of see where that dark color, I brought the pastel and blended it into the uh, pencil lead here. And now by doing the full sky in the background, what you end up getting is that yellow. Look at it. It's sort of popping over the landscape. So... It's just got a cool sort of setting sun kind of vibe with the moon coming up. And then this is, you can see with my moon, I simply put <clears throat> that blue color on the tip of my finger, like past chalk pastel on the tip, and I just dabbed my finger on the moon. So instead of directly applying, um, instead of taking this and directly applying to the moon, that might be too dark. So you, it would really sort of take over the moon, this way you have more control, the color is on your fingertip and you just dab. And what I've created is that sort of textured crater vibe that you see with the moon. But that is 
all with chalk pastels. Ooh, and some pencil. But um, <clears throat> I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for joining me today for this. Um, that felt fast. Hi, we're already at the end and um, I had a really good time. I'm happy with the results and I hope that uh, you had a pleasant time following along with me as well. Uh, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for our arts community and we're thankful um, that we are able to continue in this virtual platform uh, to bring you our demonstrations. Uh, we miss you and we hope you are well and we will talk to you, hopefully see you soon. Uh, I think they're making an announcement pretty soon about um, our current state, so we'll see how it goes. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing and talking to everyone soon. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Goodbye.